I ran up to the steer pasture this morning to get these panels moved back home so that I could set up a little makeshift alley here. And then in the event that we might happen to need to use this chute, we'll be able to. I've been kind of getting caught up in this project and thinking about what needs to happen next with the chute swap, but I, it kind of dawned on me last night that I really better get this thing up and running because we could have calves hitting the ground pretty much any day at this point. And, you know, if you're prepared for a disaster, it almost never happens. It's just when you're not prepared when it does. We got a full day ahead of us, so we better get to it. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. I had to run back to the house and get a few things and I figured while I was in the truck I better run over here to the steer pasture and check on everybody because once I get back to the ranch I feel like I will be there the rest of the day. I've said it before but I'll say it again we don't really expect calves until the end of the month but I think that today is March 14th and we are close enough to potentially getting calves that it justifies one check per day. When we get more into the heart of calving season, I'll go out too, maybe three times a day to check on things, but we're just, we're just kind of ramping up right now, I guess. At the winter pasture, about the best you can do usually is just count them. If you've got all 20 of them accounted for, then probably nothing's going on. But if one happens to be missing, then that's usually a pretty good indication that uh, they could be off having a calf. The trouble over here is when they're grazing out in the trees like this, they're very hard to count because you know you pull ahead six inches and then you see one that you couldn't see before. So it, it, it takes several counts generally. Pretty sure there's 12 of them right here nearby and then I see a pile of them laying down over there. So we'll go, we'll go check and see if there's eight and if there is, we can be on our way. Yeah, we got eight over there. So I guess there's no, nothing really too much going on over here. We're back here at the ranch now, and I think the first thing that I wanna do is just get this all buttoned up, squared away, so that if we need this chute, it's ready to go. My plan was to put these panels inside that alleyway there, to, that would give them some pretty decent structure, and then I can like tie them to the frame on the chute or something like that. You know, it, it wouldn't be a, a temporary fix if we didn't use some hay twine somewhere. So I think the first thing that I'll do is sort of place these panels in the alleyway where I think they need to go. And then I'm sure that I'm gonna have to move the chute a little bit to get everything in the right spot. So let's, yeah, let's see how everything looks. Thinking like that. Just attach this somehow. That way we can attach it like to these posts and it should be fairly strong. And as luck would have it, you can see right here, we need to move the chute out about a foot. The reason that the panels can't just go on the outside of it, because I did think of that, is because then your tailgate won't open. It has to be able to swing through. So the edge of this panel can really be no further than the frame of the chute but it's pretty easy to move. Um, I've got the come along here. All I've really got to do is park the tractor in front of it and then we can use the come along to, to move it out a little bit. All right, I think that is actually pretty good. If that's not a professional twine job, I don't know what is. Well, hopefully I never have to use this, but there it is. And I, I think it will work. The alleyway is a little bit narrow for sure, 
but odds are any any cow that's going to have to come up in here would be a first calf heifer which is a little bit smaller anyway so i think that they should fit no problem let's just say for example we get like a breech calf or something in a larger cow i still think that she can kind of shimmy her way through there and uh yeah like i said you know hopefully we don't ever have to actually find out but it's here if we need it Well, everything seems to work, so knock on wood, I guess we can move on to the next thing. Moving on to the other side of the alleyway, I need to first cut the catwalk, I think. And I know in the last video, or whatever video it was, I had talked about cutting the catwalk off a little bit further back and then making stairs going down. But as I'm looking at this, I mean, I'll, I'll still think about what I ultimately want to do, but I'm thinking what would be better is to cut the catwalk off the same spot as the alley so that as I'm walking cattle up the alleyway, I'll be able to, you know, to have access to them the entire way. And then maybe make a step coming off this way so that it would make it, you know, easier to get up there, but then you don't lose any of your access. I was afraid of. What happened there is as soon as I got through the angle iron, just because the way metal like expands and whatever it does when you weld it, um, the angle iron kind of pinched together. So the gap made from the blade was pinched closed. So now I've got to figure out a way to spread that gap to get the blade out. Do it this way. There. Okay, new plan. Instead of kind of trying to dissect this and take it apart piece by piece, I think it's gonna be a lot easier to just try to remove it all as one assembly. So we'll give that a try. Next, I'm gonna cut out this pipe going across the alley because I have hit my head on it more times than I can count. So it needs to go. I'm not gonna cut all the way through it because I'm afraid it's gonna pinch my blade, uh, but I'm almost all the way through it. So I'm hoping that if I get all the way through that one, this is cut enough that I can bend it out if indeed it does pinch the blade like I'm pretty sure that it will. And if this strategy works, then I might end up doing it with a few more of these today because we got time and we're actually moving along a little bit faster than I figured. Try 
trying to do in an attempt to make this a very straight and square cut is just kind of cut like each side of the tube at a time rather than just trying to hog through the whole thing. These porta bands have a tendency to wander a little bit and I'm trying to keep these straight. I know that I won't keep them perfectly straight, but I'm just trying to keep them as straight as I can so there's less fill work that I have to do when I weld the end piece on. needed to go a little more but I bet a hammer would fix it Let's see how straight I've got everything here. These three. This, this came out pretty good. Definitely close enough to weld. Pretty much no gap, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or less, and can definitely weld that closed. I think the next step or the next thing that I want to do is get this sheet metal cut off because it's kind of the winds catching it flopping it around it's always in the way so i mean we got to cut it eventually now seems like a good time That would just fall right off of there. There, like that. Well, for the moment, this side, I've pretty much gone as far as I can go with it for now. We just gotta do the same thing on the other side. I've got this freestanding post here now, and initially I had considered just cutting it off at uh, a little bit above ground level, and then like cutting a hole in it so that I could get a hook on it and try to pop it out of the ground. But I think what I would rather do is come in here, try to chip some of this concrete away and see if I can just yank it out of the ground all as one piece, knowing that there will be concrete stuck to whatever is underground now. But the idea being that once I got it out of the ground, I could chip that off and then I would have another square post. So yes, I would have to come cut all this other stuff off. It'll be a lot of time with the flap wheel cleaning this up and getting it ready to use somewhere else. But this square tubing is very expensive. And if I can sort of salvage two square posts out of this project, I think that's the thing to do because I could use those when I replace this fence line, when I replace the loading alley, tons of different places where it would be really nice to have square tube posts that I don't have to notch pipe and, you know, do all that other stuff. So for now, we're done on that side. Let's do it again on this side. You probably won't be able to see it, but the gap on this cut closed almost completely and I probably didn't go down quite far enough on this one so hopefully the hammer can fix it from here on out the sheet metal is really going to be in the way so I'm kind of wondering if I stuff a pipe in here kind of hold it back. The next horizontal tube I'll probably have to cut with the grinder because the catwalk is gonna be in the way of the bandsaw. I just, I don't really see any way of getting it in there. And you know, the grinder does a good job too. So uh, if you're wondering why I'm cutting this one with the grinder, that's why.
mean, this could work. I'm not gonna attempt to remove the whole ramp with this way, but if I could just get enough of this removed around the post to try to get like a three-point arm on here to lift it up, I would just be so happy if I could get these posts pulled today. I didn't think I would get that far, but now I feel like I might be able to. So let's keep chipping away, get it? Hard to quit when you're making progress. Well, I definitely went further with that than I really planned to or should have, but uh, I've got this side most of the way done. I am gonna go get a hammer drill and an air hammer and a couple other you know, proper tools that would make this go a lot faster um, because I still have to do the other side. And looking at the time, I think it's only like noon right now. I feel like there's a chance that I could get all this concrete chipped out around these two posts and get them yanked out of the ground. If indeed my tractor is capable of doing that, I might have to go get a bigger, a bigger tractor to do it. But, um, you know, no matter what we use, we're going to have to have this concrete chipped away. So let's go get the right tools and, uh, keep on trucking. All right, this is what we need here. I think next step, we can back the tractor in here and hook a chain up to the three-point arms. I'll try to lift this thing out, see what happens. I don't give this a very high chance of working but you know, we at least gotta try, so let's try. doesn't want to do it here but I think the reason is that in order for that post to pop out it's got to lift the slab and the tire from the tractor is on the slab so I think if I reposition a little bit come in at a different angle so that my rear tire is not on that slab I think it'll do it the only thing I don't like about this is the post is a little bit
further down the fork so it's not gonna have as much power. But that first attempt, we did move it. So hopefully that broke any like suction or anything like that that could be holding it down. So I don't know, we'll try it. Good news here is that not only did we get the post, but it looks like we got the concrete ramp pretty much. It's it is just floating there, but it's it's in the way. So ah, I need to figure out a way to maybe like hook a chain on it to kind of flip it to get it out of here because it needs to move. Well, today was a lot more productive than I had planned on, and you know, that, that's always awesome when that happens. I gotta tell you guys, uh, I feel a great sense of relief getting the two posts and this rear ramp out. That was the part of this project that I kind of felt like would be the hardest, and I wasn't really sure how I was gonna do it. It was just gonna be one of those figure it out as you go, which is exactly what happened, and well, it ended up working. So I think we're gonna call this one here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.